During the 1970s, a decade marked by advancement in oxidation reactions, Daniel Swern developed what became a staple in organic chemistry courses. During the same period, many DMSO-based methods also emerged, yet the Swern oxidation is the one that stole the hearts of organic chemistry textbook authors. So we mainly teach that one out of the entire family of the similar reactions. Hey everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and in this video we'll talk about the Swern oxidation, its mechanism, and we'll look at the examples similar to what you may see on the test at the end. So grab your cup of coffee, a notebook to work through the examples with me, hit that like button for good luck on the test, and let's get started! The Swern oxidation proceeds in two unrelated phases. The first one, we need to create the sulfonium cation that will react with our alcohol. We make that sulfonium ion by reacting DMSO with oxalyl chloride. The first step in this reaction is a typical nucleophilic attack from the DMSO onto the acyl chloride functional group, giving us the tetrahedral intermediate with the minus on the oxygen atom. Then we kick the chlorine out, resulting in the sulfur-containing group sitting on our molecule instead of chlorine. And I'm here showing two possible resonance structures for that, because the mechanism of the next step is going to be a little bit easier to show from the resonance structure. So this intermediate quickly undergoes the attack by the released chloride anion from the previous step, forming the dimethyl chlorosulfonium chloride in this completely crazy cascade of the electrons, and a ton of gaseous products like carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So just to reiterate one more time what's happening here, the chloride attacks our sulfur. That makes the chlorine-sulfur bond, then the electrons from the sulfur-oxygen bond go towards the carbonyl, the carbon-carbon bond breaks, and we release the other chloride into the environment. This is a complex part of the mechanism, so make sure you practice it a few times so you can reproduce it on the test from memory. Now, coming back to my mechanism here, this is not the only method of forming the sulfonium ion. However, this is the most common one. You may also encounter a reaction of dimethyl sulfide with chlorine, giving us the same sulfonium cation, or reaction with NCS, which stands for n chlorosuccinamide this cyclic molecule, and some other ways are possible as well. But among the alternatives, these are the most common ones that I typically see. And frankly, I don't blame chemists for looking at the alternative ways, because the oxalyl chloride is one of those lovely reagents that you will hate from the first whiff. Although the dimethyl sulfide is also known as one of the worst smelling chemicals out there, so, you know, I honestly don't know which one is worse. And funny enough, I personally seem to be the only chemist on this planet who doesn't mind the smell of the sulfur organic compounds, but then again, my mother always told me I was a special kind of a kid. Anyways, leaving the murky details of my childhood and returning back to our chemistry here, the sulfonium ion that we have prepared in the first step in this reaction going to rapidly react with the alcohol. This is essentially a simple SN2 reaction where the alcohol comes in and kicks the chlorine out replacing it. And once we have our intermediate, we are going to deprotonate that with the chloride anion that we just kicked out, and that's floating around us, giving the intermediate with an oxygen-sulfur bond, which we are going to treat with the base. Typically, the base of choice here is going to be triethylamine, although some other alternatives are also possible, and you might encounter some other possible bases here. Now, there is a correct way to show the next step in the mechanism, and there is an incorrect one. Some textbooks and instructors want to show this step in an analogous way to other oxidations that you are most likely have seen up to this point, namely something like Jones oxidation or oxidation with PCC. So they immediately go after the alpha hydrogens right away. However, However, the research data doesn't support that pathway. It has been shown in a number of studies that triethylamine first deprotonates the methyl group that is attached to our sulfur atom, 
And only then this newly formed anionic space is going to undergo the intramolecular proton transfer, giving us the final product uh, and the dimethyl sulfide as a co-product in this case. And while this mechanism is kind of long and first part of it you have to pretty much memorize, it is a commonly tested mechanism. And while I cannot guarantee that your instructor will bring it to the test, if you cover this Werner oxidation, there is a high chance it will show up on the test as well. So better be safe than sorry when it comes to fancy reactions like this one. So practice and practice again. Now the swirin oxidation, like many other oxidation reactions of this type, have excellent chemoselectivity. For instance, in this example, we are going to oxidize the primary alcohol and nothing happens to our carbonyl. In the next example, I have a molecule with two primary alcohols and an alkene. Here, the oxidation gives me a dialdehyde and keeps my double bond intact. And finally, in this case, I have a molecule with a secondary alcohol and also a primary alcohol. Here, the primary alcohol will turn into the corresponding aldehyde, while the secondary alcohol will give us a ketone, and the ether functional group that I have sitting there will not undergo any transformations. So what do you think about this Wern oxidation and its mechanism? Is it a fun one or do you hate it with passion? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I want to especially thank all Organic Chemistry Tutor members and my generous sponsors for your continuous support and encouragement. These videos won't be possible without you. If you learned something new today, show it to me by hitting that like button, share this video with your friends and classmates, subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates, watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow.